this lecture, we will take a specific example of RF oscillator, LC based oscillator. And then we will use a feedback model to find out the oscillation frequency and the transconductance of the MOS uh, that will be used to, to implement the amplifier part of the oscillator. So first we will uh, talk about the Colpitts oscillator. So as we saw in the feedback model, there uh, should be an amplifier and uh, then there should be frequency selective circuit. So here we have a MOS and uh, then we have this uh, C1, C2 and L acting as frequency selective circuit. And we take the output from the drain of the MOS. And we are giving a uh, rather connected uh, uh, LC network to both uh, gate and the source. So we know that uh, MOS as an amplifier can be used in uh, three different ways. First is uh, common source. CS and then uh, common drain. Or in fact, the common gate. And uh, finally, common drain or the source uh, follower. So these uh, three ways uh, in which we can have uh, three different version of this uh, Colpitts oscillator that I have just uh, shown here. But for this lecture, what we will do, we will use the most common uh, configuration of the MOS, that means uh, common source version. So in the simplest uh, implementation of the common source uh, configuration, we know that the source is grounded. That means uh, Vs is going to be uh, zero and we will be taking output from the drain. And that is what we have shown here. So actually this one is valid only for common source and uh, for common gate also, not for the common uh, drain. And uh, the source is grounded. So the feedback actually will be going to the gate. So we have this signal as uh, input, which is also the feedback. So we will find out uh, what is the oscillation frequency for this case and uh, what is the GM of the MOS? Uh, and uh, we will make to keep the thing simple, certain uh, uh, assumptions. So first that uh, we will make is that we will basically neglect CGS is equal to zero, but later on we will include it also and we will see that it can be included very easily. And this is equivalent to saying that the operating frequency is going to be very small compared with the threshold frequency. So typically when we have a MOS or a transistor based circuit, we try to use the simple model for the transistor. And if you want more accuracy, then we include more things. For example, initially we tend to neglect the channel length modulation and then we include it. But here, uh, we will uh, include the channel length modulation. That means uh, we will assume lambda is not equal to zero. So this implies that uh, R naught is large and uh, finite. And uh, 
we will see later on that if we uh, exclude the channel length modulation, then uh, what are the issues that we uh, face? So typically will be that we will not get the meaningful result for uh, the circuit that we are analyzing. So now we uh, are ready for the analysis. So what we will do, we will uh, replace this MOS by the small signal model and uh, then uh, try to find out the uh, feedback, that means beta, and uh, find out the gain, uh, A, and then use the Berkhausen criteria to set up the equations. So, So we replace MOS by small signal model. Although this is not very uh, accurate, that means uh, using small signal model for uh, MOS because uh, usually the outputs are uh, significantly large comparable to the DC bias. And let me also point out here, this is not the complete circuit. Uh, this is uh, without the bias network. So there has to be certain DC at the gate and the drain and uh, MOS should be kept into saturation mode. That means in the amplifying mode and then only that circuit will uh, work. And we are assuming that those circuits uh, will not have significant effect on the oscillation frequency and uh, GM of the transistor that we will derive from the circuit that uh, has been shown uh, here. So now we include the frequency selective circuit, the beta network. So ultimately we will have to The Gaussian criteria has to be imposed. So we need to find out what is beta for this circuit and uh, what is A for this circuit. So beta, you can see is uh, feedback, this uh, PF signal that is being fed. So here output is uh, being fed to this frequency selective circuit. Uh, LC circuit and uh, we are taking this VF as a uh, voltage uh, between L and C1. So here, this is going to be VF by VO and uh, A is uh, going to be this VO by uh, VF. So here, we do not have any signal at the source. So input uh, is equal to VF is equal to VG. So we are now going to find out beta. Finding beta. So we can see that uh, for beta, basically uh, voltage division is taking place uh, between this L and uh, C1. So what we can do is we can straightway write uh, beta, this Vf by Vo as uh, the reactance of C1 divided by reactance of C1 plus the reactance of inductor. So Xc1 divided by Xc1 plus Xl. And uh, here, uh, by Xc, we mean this expression. That means even the J is also included in X, typically which is taken outside. But to keep the expressions more compact, this is what we will do. So keep in mind that X inherently is uh, an imaginary uh, element. So we have now written the expression for beta. 
we now just need to find out uh, what will be uh, the gain. So finding the gain. So for finding this thing, uh, we will have to uh, set up equation. We can uh, write uh, KCL at this node drain. So here we see that uh, we have a output current. IO and this gets splitted into say IM and uh, IR. So for finding out this, ACL at the drain, then so here we get IO is equal to IM plus IR and uh, IO we can see is uh, actually contributions coming from C2 and uh, this C1 and uh, L part. So what we see here is for finding out IO and this node voltage is VO. So for finding out IO, we can see that we have this scenario, there is C2 here and this end is uh, grounded. Then we have C1 and inductor and both are connected to VO and this current is I0. So here we have a scenario. So we can represent the admittance of this uh, whole network by Y. And uh, so Y is uh, going to be uh, admittance of this C2 part and admittance of uh, C1 and L path. So this is going to be 1 by XC2 plus 1 by XC1 plus XL. So this is going to be the admittance of this whole network. So I0 is uh, going to be 0 minus VO multiplied by this admittance. And uh, this is going to be equal to IM and uh, IR. And we can see that uh, IM is uh, between this voltage VO and uh, ground VS, which is grounded. So, and similarly, IR is also between uh, VO and PS. So this IM is GM, VGS, and uh, IR is going to be VO divided by R0. So here we get VO, Y is equal to GM, and uh, VGS is simply VF because source is grounded. So here we have this equation, and uh, we can then uh, combine the VO terms together. So, Sorry, this is uh, VO. So what we get here is uh, VO by VF, which is A is equal to minus GM divided by Y plus one by R naught. So the A turns out to be equal to minus GM divided by one by XC2 plus one by XL plus XC1 plus 1 by R0. So this is equation 2. So now we know both uh, A and beta. So one can now uh, uh, set up the equation. But before we set up the equation, uh, let us just try to see that uh, this A could have alternatively be derived also. So this is uh, basically uh, A is gain of a common source amplifier. So here uh, we know that uh, for this case, when the degeneration is not there, then uh, for common source gain is equal to minus GM Z out. So if we have this 
type of configuration where source is grounded, then uh, what, what we need to do is uh, we need to find out this J out. And uh, in this case, so we can see that what we have is this scenario. Here. So this is L, this is C1, this is C2. So we have to now find out J out. So assuming that uh, uh, impedance in this direction uh, is infinite, what we see is J out uh, basically becomes parallel combination of impedance of this LC network and the impedance of uh, this MOS. So JLC and JM. So this J out becomes J L C parallel to J M. And uh, J L C you can see is one by Y and this uh, Y we have already found out. Or uh, this can also be written as so uh, Y L C plus Y M. So why we have already found out. Uh, now we just need to find out Y M. So Z M for this case is actually going to be or not. So Y M is going to be one by R not. So here we can see that Y out is uh, going to be one by R not plus one by X C two plus one by X C one plus X L. Right. So what will be the gain? The gain for C S will be minus G M by Y out. And this is what we have got. So here we can put this whole expression. So this is another way one could have uh, directly written the expression for gain. Anyway, what we have uh, shown here uh, using uh, KCL at the drain is a very general uh, procedure, and this can be applied uh, even for common gate, common drain case also. So now we have both uh, A and beta, so we can uh, set up the equation for finding out the oscillation frequency and the GM. So, so when we apply this, so from one and two, we get XC1 divided by XL plus XC1 into minus GM divided by one by x c two plus one by x c one plus x l plus one by r naught is equal to one so we can uh, rearrange so on the left hand side we will have minus gm x c one and uh, on the right hand side we will have x l plus x c one into one by x c two plus one by x c one plus x l plus one by r naught. Now we can uh, expand the right hand side. So what we get is x l plus x c one x c two plus one plus x l plus x c one by r naught minus m x c one. So we can do the cross multiplication to get rid of the denominator term on the right hand side. So what we get is minus x c one x c two r naught g m is equal to x l plus x c one into r naught plus x c two r zero plus x l plus x c one into x c two. So we can now uh, segregate the first order and second order term on the right hand side in terms of uh, those reactances. 
So when we collect all the first order term, XL plus XO C1 plus XC2 into or not. So that means this term and this term we can combine. And then we will have this second order term. That means these are the basically product of two reactances. XL plus XC1 into XC2. So keep in mind that each of X is basically uh, an imaginary element. So we see that uh, on the right hand side, we have uh, this first order term in X. So that means so uh, this is fundamentally going to be uh, imaginary term. While this is the second order term in X product of two X's. So this is going to be ultimately real term. Similarly, if you see the left hand side, then left hand side is also basically product of two X's. That means this is also uh, real. So now what we can do, we can compare the real and imaginary on the two sides to set up the equations. So first, uh, as you can see that uh, imaginary part is going to give rise to simpler uh, equation. So we will first uh, compare the imaginary part and set up the equation. Comparing the imaginary and uh, real parts on the two sides. So first for the imaginary part, so for imaginary part, what we get is XL plus XC1 plus XC2 into R0 is equal to zero. So R0 is uh, obviously not infinite. So what we should get is XL plus XC1 plus XC2 is equal to zero. Now we can substitute uh, the actual expression for these reactances. So this is uh, uh, G omega L, and this is minus J omega C1, this is minus J omega C2 is equal to zero. So what we get uh, here is J omega L minus one by omega, C1 plus C2 by C1, C2. So these uh, can be combined. So what we get is omega square is equal to C1 plus C2 divided by L, C1, C2. And uh, this gives rise to the oscillation frequency omega as uh, square root of one by L, C1, C2, C1 plus C2. So we can write this whole thing in more compact form, L and C effective, where C effective is a combination of C1 and C2 in series fashion. So we see that the imaginary part has uh, led to the oscillation frequency of the circuit. Now we will uh, use the real part to see that what do we get and as I was pointed out uh, GM is the other parameter that we typically get from the Burkhausen criteria so it should be the uh, real part but let us now do it so now we uh, compare the real part of the of the above equation so we can call this equation three so for this case so we will real part of three. So that will give rise to minus XC1, XC2, GM R0 is equal to XL plus XC1, XC2. So here now what we can do, uh, we can divide both sides by XC2 and we can bring all the terms on one side so what we will get is XC1 GM R0 plus XL plus XC1 is equal to zero. Now we have already seen that the sum of all the reactances, uh, which is here, 
e is equal to zero. So we can use this term and uh, we can call this as say equation 3a. So now using 3a, we can uh, write this equation as x e1 gm r not minus x e2 is equal to zero. So that gives rise to gm r not is equal to x e2 by x e1. So which will become c1 by c2. So what we find is gm r not is equal to c1 by c2 or maybe gm is equal to c1 by r not into c2. But here this uh, gm r not this is called the uh, intrinsic gain of uh, MOS. So we will get this gain as the gain of a common source amplifier if we have this kind of uh, circuit. So source is grounded, input is at the gate, output is from the drain. And if we have infinite impedance between this VDD and the uh, drain, and one of the ways is by putting a DC current source here. So if you analyze this circuit for the gain, then the gain for this case, for this circuit will turn out to be minus GM R0. So here we see that there is no resistive element and MOS uh, on itself uh, is able to give this much of gain. So the second information that we got from the Berkhausen criteria is the intrinsic gain of the MOS that uh, we used in the circuit. And uh, then we can calculate uh, GM also if we want. Okay, so we derived this result for the two assumptions. That means uh, CGS was gate to source capacitor was neglected and uh, then uh, channel length modulation uh, was included. So let us uh, uh, re-examine the assumption number one. That means uh, uh, we remove now the assumption number one. Assumption CGS is equal to zero. So now we include CGS in the circuit. So if we include the CGS in the circuit, then our small signal model signal model uh, is like this. So of course only CGS comes into the picture. GM VGS and uh, here uh, we have our uh, LC network. Source is uh, grounded. We have inductor here and then uh, we have CGS here. So what we can see here is uh, that when we include CGS, what happens is the CGS is connected between gate or this node, this VF node, and then between source and which is ground. So now if you see C1, C1 is also connected between same node VF and the source. So what we find is from this model that uh, CGS and C1, they are in parallel. So fortunately, these are the one of those rare cases there where one can uh, include one more uh, element in the small signal model and still won't have to do the calculation all over again. So very easily now we can say that uh, our C1, new C1, which is C1 dash is actually C1 plus the CGS capacitor. So this can be very easily uh, included in the uh, model and the formula then uh, will be uh, same L uh, 1 by square root of L C effective, but now C effective will be C1 dash C2 by C1 dash plus C2. So this is how this can be easily incorporated.
So not only this, uh, here uh, drain to bulk capacitor, which will appear here between this uh, drain node and the bulk, which uh, if it is grounded, PDV, this can also be easily absorbed into C2 because uh, C2 is connected between drain and source, which is grounded. So drain to bulk capacitor is also between drain and uh, bulk. Uh, bulk is grounded. So we can, uh, including CDB. So C2 gets modified to C2 plus CDB. So then uh, Omega will get, uh, uh, it will remain the same formula. Now instead of uh, C2, we will have C2 dash. So which includes CDB. So we see that uh, the formula that we have derived for very uh, simple scenario is actually uh, uh, immediately or effortlessly including the two parasitic capacitors. So here uh, and uh, source to bulk capacitor will be uh, anyway grounded because source is grounded. Only this uh, gate to uh, drain capacitor that uh, cannot be easily incorporated here. So that has to be uh, for that uh, separate analysis has to be carried out. And uh, so this is about the uh, omega. And uh, when we include all those uh, uh, parasitics, then uh, formula for uh, uh, intrinsic gain that also gets uh, modified, but the structure remains same. So this was uh, when we removed the uh, first assumption. Now let us see that what happens uh, when we uh, exclude the channel length modulation, which is typically what we do when we uh, take up a more complicated circuit. So now we want to exclude. Channel length. So this implies that uh, we are saying lambda is equal to zero or one by R naught, sorry, uh, R naught is infinite. So these two are the equivalent uh, statements. So we can uh, exclude this thing and uh, uh, re-derive the expression. But uh, what we can do, we can go back to some of the equations and uh, just try to take uh, R not infinite. That means one by R not is equal to zero. So we can uh, start from here and then see that uh, what do we get? So if we do this part in here, this equation number three. So we can now divide uh, both uh, left and right hand side by R naught. So this R naught will be canceled here. And then uh, in the denominator of this factor, we will have R naught. So when R naught is infinite, this part uh, becomes zero. That means uh, uh, here, this real part becomes zero. Then we have a uh, one real part on the right side, uh, left side, and one imaginary part on the uh, right side. So both are now going to be uh, zero. So the equation that we will get is uh, going to be so from three what we can uh, get is minus x e one x e one x e two g m is equal to x l plus x e one plus x e two. So this is for uh, R not infinite. Now this is a uh, uh, real part. This is imaginary part. So both of them uh, have to be independently zero. So when we uh, take the imaginary part is equal to zero, so we land up with the uh, equation which we have uh, already encountered. So that uh, 
ultimately gives rise to omega is equal to 1 by square root lc effective where c effective is so uh, the series of these two capacitors so nothing new from the imaginary part and uh, this is not difficult to uh, understand because uh, uh, the oscillation frequency is anyway independent of uh, uh, r naught but now if you see the real part uh, real part is equal to zero for the verb equation it says that uh, xc1 xc2 gm is equal to zero so this basically says gm divided by omega square c1 c2 is equal to zero so here we have uh, four parameters and uh, either numerator is zero or uh, denominators are uh, infinite so these are the two possibilities so let us see the case one cases various cases so gm is equal to zero if you say this then we know that uh, gm is equal to 2 mu and cox w by l id is equal to zero so uh, this says that uh, id is equal to zero so transistor is uh, off so in this case so uh, oscillator will not work oscillator is say off or it doesn't work so this is uh, not what we want so now we will have to take up the cases uh, what with respect to c1 and c2 so this factor is going to be zero when c1 is infinite so second possibility is c1 is infinite so if you take c1 infinite then you see recall the circuit that we have uh, this scenario we have inductor we have c and uh, what has been basically done is the voltage between inductor and c1 is being fed to the gate so if c1 is infinite then uh, this part gets uh, short circuited so that means uh, this vf uh, become zero there is no feedback and again uh, there is no oscillation so this implies no feedback implies uh, no oscillation so this is also not uh, meaningful then if you take c2 infinite then what we say is uh, c2 is connected between ground and output so if you take c2 infinite then this part gets uh, short circuited so this implies uh, vo is zero and again uh, there will be no output and in fact there will be no feedback if uh, vo is zero because feedback is generated from vo so no output no oscillation so we see that uh, if we do not include the uh, channel length modulation we do not uh, get the meaningful uh, result so that is why we had to include the uh, channel length modulation now uh, what we will do uh, we will talk about the other versions of this uh, culprit source later say uh, common gate configuration So in the common gate, uh, as the name suggests, uh, gate is going to get grounded. So in the common gate also, the output uh, is always from the drain as usual. But now this uh, gate is going to get grounded but uh, source is uh, now uh, not grounded because it was grounded in the previous case. So here, what we will have to uh, do is find out the feedback. So you can see that uh, there is no feedback voltage uh, from the uh, gate side, gate is grounded, but we know that the MOS uh, senses VGS as the input. 
So which is equal to VG minus VS. So it is this voltage which is sensed by MOS to produce the drain current, which ultimately produces this uh, drain voltage or the output voltage. So here for the common gate case, uh, for uh, CG case, VG is equal to zero. So in this case, VS minus VS actually becomes the input. So here, the feedback voltage is actually going to be minus Vs. So therefore, the beta is uh, now going to be, which was Vf by Vo is equal to minus Vs by Vo. So this is how we will have to calculate uh, beta. And the uh, gain, which is Vo by uh, Vf or Vi, so this will become Vo by uh, minus Vs. So this is actually more precisely defined as Vo by uh, Vi. And uh, Vi, as you can see, is minus Vs. So these are the slight change in the exact uh, expression for uh, beta and A, depending upon which uh, configuration of the MOS we are using for uh, implementing the uh, culprits oscillator. But whatever may be the configuration out of those three uh, possible, the oscillation frequency and the uh, gain condition, they remain same. So even for this case, if we carry out the detailed analysis like uh, we did for the previous case, omega will turn out to be a one by square root L C effective. And uh, intrinsic gain, this also remains uh, C1 by C2. So there is no uh, going to be no effect on uh, these results for any of the three cases. So in this uh, analysis, what we had done is we had uh, taken the reactances so uh, in a very specific uh, way. That means uh, we had taken uh, two capacitors, C1, C2, and one inductor. Now we are going to generalize this circuit, even for this common source uh, configuration only. So in the generalized version, what we will do is we will uh, not spell out the exact nature of these three reactances. We will simply say that there are three reactances connected in uh, this circuit and in this uh, topology. And then we will carry out the analysis for this common source uh, case and then try to see that what should be the nature of those three reactances. So now we are going to talk about a more general circuit and we will be surprised to see that there's one alternative version of this circuit and that leads to uh, Hartley oscillator. So, So we will generalize this culprit oscillator and we'll see that the analysis will imply two oscillators. One is the uh, culprits, which we have already studied. Second is going to be Hartley oscillator. So the general circuit. Again, in the uh, common source uh, configuration. So we have MOS in common source configuration. And then we simply say that we have two reactances. In fact, three reactances. Topology is similar to what we have already seen for the pulpit's case. Here. So we have these three reactances, X1, X2, and X3. 
we don't know the nature of uh, these. That means so which of them is going to be capacitor, which of them is going to be inductor. And since this is common source, so output is from drain and the input or the feedback is at the gate. So the nature, nature of X1, X2, and X3 to be determined. So we want to ask what should be the nature of these so that this circuit acts like an oscillator. So this is what we want to ask. And uh, again, uh, we will take uh, lambda not equal to zero because we have seen that this has to be done for meaningful uh, outcome. And uh, let us say CGH zero because it can be easily uh, adopted when we want to include CGS and uh, CDB. So we again uh, impose the Berkhausen criteria. So beta A is equal to one, and uh, one can uh, uh, proceed in a similar way, the way we did for that case, and uh, that will uh, finally lead to Uh, this equation, which we have already encountered, but it was in terms of uh, uh, C2. Recall this X3 was XL, X1 was XC1, X2 was uh, XC2. So we have already seen this equation in terms of uh, C1 and C2 and C3 here. So we see that uh, this is uh, real part, this is real part, and this is imaginary part. So when we had this equation, what we did was we started with the uh, imaginary part. So now setting imaginary part equal to zero. So that gives rise to X3 plus X1 plus X2 is equal to zero. Of course, uh, R0, but that is not going to have uh, any effect. So this is X3 plus X1 plus X2 is equal to zero. So from here, if you want that sum of three reactances is equal to zero, uh, all of these three cannot be positive, implies that all x's can't be positive or negative. So this implies that uh, at least one of x's must be negative. So one of them can be negative or two of them can be negative. So these are the possibilities. So what we can have is a uh, no scenario when say uh, X3 is positive and X1, X2 negative. Or we can have X3 negative and X1, X2 positive. In fact, uh, various combinations are possible, but I am pointing out only those these two cases, but uh, few other combinations are also possible. So there's a reason why I have pointed out only these two combinations. Now let us see that uh, what information do we get when we uh, impose real part uh, equal to zero. No. From the real part, of uh, this equation, other equation, the real part of the
So real part when we equate what we get is minus x1 x2 gm r not equal to x3 plus x1 into x2. So this is what we get uh, x2 uh, is not going to be zero so we can cancel out the uh, x2 so what we will get is uh, x1 gm r0 is equal to x3 plus x1 now from uh, this equation we see that uh, x1 plus x3 is equal to minus x2 so we, we can now uh, write minus x1 gm r0 is equal to minus x2 here so we arrive at an equation which with we are familiar for the for its case we arrive at this case and for that case it was xc2 by xc1 but here we see that uh, two reactances they are appearing in the form of uh, ratio and they are always x2 and x1 so here, this left-hand side is always positive. GM and R0, they are always positive. So this implies this side also must be always positive. So this says that X1 and X2, they must be of same sign. So here, we had a number of possibilities, but uh, from this real part, we conclude that there are only two possibilities. That x1 and x2 they should be either positive or x1 and x2 they should be either negative so now this uh, previous equation this equation will immediately tell that the x3 has to be of opposite sign uh, uh, with respect to sign of the x1 and x2 that is why i pointed out only these two cases case one and case two so here we see that uh, uh, when we take the case one where x1 and x2 are uh, uh, negative. So case one, uh, x1, x2, they are negative. That means uh, x1, x2, they are capacitive. So this implies uh, x3 has to be positive, and this says that uh, x3 is inductive. And this thing we have already seen. So this case so one is basically called Pitts oscillator, which we have already seen. And the result, uh, they are going to be uh, same as what we got. Now, if we take the uh, other possibility, here we have taken negative. So if we take case two, that means uh, X1 and uh, X2, they are positive. So this implies that uh, uh, they are inductive. So both X1 and X2 are inductive. So this then implies that uh, X3 has to be negative. That means it has to be capacitive. So this is something new that we are now concluding. So for this case, uh, the circuit is So if we draw the circuit for this case, this is what we are going to get. So here we have source grounded. This is L1, this is L2, both are uh, positive. And here X3 is uh, C. So we are now going to get uh, uh, this equation. So since the reactance of all these three are zero, so that means uh, uh, J omega L1 plus J omega L2 minus J by omega C is equal to zero. So this is J omega L1 plus L2 minus J by omega C is equal to zero. And uh, then we get omega uh, square is equal to one by L1 plus L2 into C. So omega is equal to 1 by square root L1 plus L2 into C. Or in more uh, compact form, now it is L effective. Earlier it used to be 
C effective. So we have uh, now the formula for uh, this circuit, and this circuit is uh, called the Hartley oscillator. Hartley oscillator. And uh, if we find out the intrinsic gain, which was GMR naught is equal to X1 divided by uh, X2. So this becomes L1 by L2. So, so we see that uh, surprisingly for certain uh, general analysis, so we are able to uh, get a new version of the circuit. So this is also quite popular. And uh, for this case, we had neglected the gate to source capacitor, but if uh, one wants to include the gate to source capacitor, which is going to be like this, CGS, then we see that uh, CGS is going to be in parallel with uh, L1. So this has to be modified. And similarly, if one wants to include the drain to bulk capacitor, CDB, then that can also be uh, combined with L2. But in this case, the formula is not going to be so simple. After including CGS and uh, CDB, so here uh, we will now have CGS in parallel with L1. So now we will have a new reactance uh, X1 as J omega L1 minus J by omega CGS. So X1 is now going to be like this. And uh, similarly, this is going to get modified. DB, this is L2, this point is wrong. So X2 uh, becomes Omega CDB. So, one has to put these X1 and X2 in uh, the general equation that we had derived uh, here. So if one carries out the analysis, one has to put here and then uh, find out the exact uh, expression for the uh, oscillation. So this is what we arrived at uh, by taking the help of uh, Berkhausen criteria, that means feedback model. We will see that uh, we can analyze uh, these circuits using a negative resistance model also, which we'll do in the next class. And uh, we will ar arrive at the same conclusion. And then we'll further modify these circuits to uh, get a different uh, oscillator.